Hey there, how you doing? We're doing, uh, we're solving some applications of quadratics today. So we're going to look at different the the techniques that we can use to use all our knowledge now about solving quadratic equations to look at problems and how we might solve those problems using our newfound knowledge about quadratics. So by the end of this lesson, we're going to be able to solve those problems that involve quadratic equations. Let's have a look at what we need to do. Firstly, firstly, we need to write, we need to define a variable in the equation. We need to say this is going to be this and this is going to be that. We need to make sure we say that. I mean, it's very important. Then we need to write an equation that represents the problem. Write that equation down. Uses that defined variable to make sure it's all clear. Secondly, thirdly, we solve that equation using our understanding about solving quadratic equations now. We've got those little little tools tucked into our belt that we can um, use at uh, any any appropriate situation. Uh, and we also got, if, if we got, if you know, quadratic equations, you sometimes get two answers, right? Two answers, one of those might not be suitable. One of those might not make sense. An example is, a lot of the time you'll get a negative value when talking about time or when talking about maybe a, a length, a measurement, okay, a negative measurement, that doesn't make sense. Can't really have a negative measurement. So we, you know, can make sure that we can define the correct variable, say it's this value here, make sure it makes sense. Then we need to make sure we answer that original question posed, answer it in a sentence. We've got an example for you here. Uh, it's going to be quick but we're going to do it in a lot of detail. Okay, it's a simple example. But we're going to do it in a lot of detail. So we've got an area, it's a rectangle. It is exactly 28 square meters. The length is three meters more than its width. Find the dimensions of the rectangle. Okay, so we can say, let's define this value. Let's define the width. Okay, so we can say, let the width be W. That is the thing that we are going to try and find. We've defined the variable. That's what we're going to do to start with. Let's write down some extra information that we know. We know that the area of our rectangle is equal to 28 square meters. We also know the length of the rectangle is going to be the width plus three. The width plus three. So we've got these pieces of information. We've got the width being W, length being L here, okay? Let's substitute these values in into a formula that we know. We know the formula for the area of a rectangle. Let's write that down. Area equals length times width. We don't need to define anything in that um, equation because it is, it is well known that that is the formula for the area of a rectangle. Let's substitute in what we know now. We know that area is 28 we know that the length is equal to W plus three. We said that, it says here, the length is three more, uh, meters more than the width. And we multiply that by W. Now, if we're looking at trying to solve this straight off the bat, very difficult. What we need to do is we need to get it into a form that is accessible to us. So that means expanding this out, we get W squared plus three W. Then if I subtract 28 from both sides, I get 0 equals W squared plus 3W minus 28. Boom. There we go. Something we can solve. It is in the form of AX squared plus BX plus C equals 0. Except we've got W this time. We're going to be solving for W. So, remember, there's, there are two ways. Two ways that we can solve uh, our quadratic equation here two ways we can solve it. We can factorize or we can use the quadratic formula. We can use either of those two ways. I'm going to show you both ways today just as a little treat. So let's look at first way of factorizing. AC in this case is negative 28 and B and B it is 3. B is 3. So two numbers that multiply to give negative 28 add to give 3. 7, negative 4. 7, negative 4. 7 minus 4 is 3. 7 times negative 4 is negative 28. It's a thing of beauty. W squared 
plus 7w minus 4w minus 28. Factorize the first two. I got w, that's the highest common factor. W plus 7 is left over. I've got negative 4 being the, being the highest common factor of the second two is equal to w plus 7 because I've got negative here, negative 4 times a positive 7 is going to be that negative 28 right there. I get w plus 7 as being the common factor between the first and second terms on the next line here, so we get w plus 7. w plus 7 highest common factor left over with w minus 4. Null factor theorem comes into play. w plus 7 must equal 0 or w minus 4 must equal 0. Which one can it be? It can't be both. w equals negative 7. Negative 7 here. Or w equals 4. Oh, just like I prophesied before, I've got negative 7. Oh, negative 7 width. Now, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make a lick of sense. It's, it's, it's impossible. It can't be this one. It can't be this one. But bam, but bam. It is w equals 4. So we now have almost solved the question. We've almost answered the question. We need to write one final thing though. We haven't, we have, we've, we've certainly defined the variable. We've written equation in, an equation involving the variable. Here it is. Here's the equation involving the variable. We've then solved that equation using our understanding of the magic that is solving quadratic equations. And we've also then checked our answer. We've checked and said negative seven, nah, don't believe it. Positive four, magnifique, perfect. So the width is four meters. But have we answered the question? No, we have not. Dimensions of the rectangle, that is what we are asked for. So we know that W equals four, but we know that length equals W plus three. Four plus three, the length is seven. And then we answer in a sentence. Answer in a sentence. Therefore, the width of the rectangle is 4 metres and the length is 7 metres. And there we go, we've answered the question. Now I said I had a treat for you, and that treat is we're going to see if we can use our other method to solve that quadratic equation. Now what did we end up with? It was something like uh, 0 equals uh, w squared plus 3w minus 28. We can use our quadratic equation now. Always write the equation down. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Should be well practiced with that now. Continue practicing. Say it to yourself every every night. Every night. Do it. Do it five times. Substitute in negative b. That's negative three plus or minus square root of three squared minus four times one times negative twenty-eight. There we go. All over two times one. Negative three plus or minus, and we get if if I put all of this in my calculator, all of the the discriminant. This thing here, if I put all that in my calculator, I get 121 over 2. And that's negative 3 plus or minus 11 over 2. Put all that in my calculator, do the plus first, so negative 3 plus 11, which is 8, divide by 2, ah, I get 4. Or if I put it in with a minus instead, I get negative 7. And the rest is exactly the same. We know that Bam, bam, negative seven, not possible. Can't have a can't have a negative length. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, so the the big tick goes to our four meters here. Substitute back in to get the dimensions because we want to answer that question. It says the dimensions there. It says the dimensions. That's what we want. That's the answer that we want. Okay. So today we've looked at uh, using quadratic equations to solve problems. So remember those steps. Make sure you define the variable. Write an equation involving the variable solve that equation, check to see if it's all legit, then answer the actual question.